takes us back to the praise house, our Gullah Geechee heritage, the low country in this historical church. And we get to do our, our low country class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you live right, if you do right, if you pray right, heaven belongs to you. To do what thus saith the Lord, heaven will belong to you. Good morning, Wesley. Good morning. Good morning to our family on WebEx. Let's begin our worship service this morning with the call to worship. Gather this day to worship. Gather this day to praise God. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, our hymn of praise this morning is number 454 in your United Methodist hymnal. Open my eyes, and I'm going to ask that if you're able to please stand, those here in the sanctuary. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my ears that I may hear. Open my mouth, let me bear. Illumine me, spirit divine. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come before you this morning, God, with thanksgiving in my heart, God. I come before you, God, to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who died that we might live. Lord, thank you, Jesus, that we can come to you with our concerns. Lord, as we enter into your worship service, whether it be in the sanctuary or on WebEx, God, Lord, help us not to be distracted, God. Let us focus on you, God. 
Lord, fill this place with your glory this morning. God, don't let us leave the way that we came in, God. We came to the hospital, God, for the sin sick, God. Do a circumcision on our hearts, God. Oh, God, regulate our minds this morning in the name of Jesus, God. Make us and mold us, God. We're on the potter's wheel in the name of Jesus. Move self out of the way this morning, God, so you can allow your Holy Spirit to move. God, rain down on us this morning, God. A fresh anointing in the name of Jesus from the crown of our heads, God, to the soles of our feet, God. Search us, God. Search us, God. If you find anything that's not of you, change it in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we love you, God. We honor you. We adore you, God. And it's in Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name that I pray. And we all say amen. daily practice learning to lean on Jesus. Our affirmation of faith this morning is our modern affirmation. It is found on page number 885 in your United Methodist hymnal. Those who are present, if you're able to stand, I'm going to ask if you please stand as we recite together. The Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, Whose holy faith let us now declare. Believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all of his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children. We believe in Jesus Christ, the God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of thy hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives. Whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love and as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Man, you may be seated, and we will now be favored with the musical selection from the choir. He's done so much.
tell it all, but you better tell something. We don't want the rocks crying out for us. Oh, thank you, choir. Our Psalter this morning is found on page 779, Psalm 44 in your United Methodist hymnal. And I'm going to ask once again, if you're able in the sanctuary, to please stand. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our forebears have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but our forebears planted. You afflicted the people. Free. Not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm give them victory. But your right hand and your arm, and the light of your constance, for you delighted in them. <laughs> You are my ruler and my God, who ordains victories for Jacob. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. You have saved us from our foes, and have put the confusion of those who hate us. And God, we have boasted continually. Everybody 
Plates are not passed during service. You may please place your offering in the plates upon entering or exiting, exiting the sanctuary. Those on WebEx, you can mail your offering in to PO Box 1463, U.S. South Carolina 29901. All things come unto me. And Oh man, you may be seated. Going to mark our scripture readings for this morning, and we're going to go ahead and mark the New Testament reading first is on page 1318 in your pew bible the book of matthew chapter 11 and we will be reading verses 16 through 19 and then jumping to verse 25 being 25 through 30 that is page 1318 in your pew bible you'll take your ribbon mark that page 1318 Then going to turn to our Old Testament reading, the book of Genesis this morning. It is on page 30. We start reading on page 33. So Genesis chapter 24, page 33, and we'll continue reading page 34. We'll please find Genesis chapter 24, beginning with the 34th verse. And also, when we get to the New Testament, I'm going to ask you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. I think we're all there. Please join with me for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. Old Testament from the book of Genesis, chapter 24. I'll be reading verses 34 through 38 and jumping to verse 42 to 49, then jumping again to verse 58 through 67, beginning with verse 34. He said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. He hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him he unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughter of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my father's house, to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. Getting at verse 42. I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, and now thy do prosper my way, which I go. Behold, Stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin come forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, 
and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. Before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. She went down into the well and drew water. I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. She made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, drink. I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank. She made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, whose daughter art thou? She said, daughter of Bethul, a horse son, whom Milcah bare upon him. And I put the earring upon her face, the bracelets upon her hands. I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter to his son. Now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Verse 58. They called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. They sent away Rebekah and her sister and her nurse, Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Rebekah arose and her damsels. They rode upon the camels and followed the man. The servant took Rebekah and he went his way. And as it came from the way of the well, Lahiroi, for he dwelt in the south city. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. When she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, The man is this that walketh in the field to meet us. The servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. He loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. You're able now, I'm going to ask that you please stand for the reading of the gospel, the New Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning with verse 16. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? Is it like unto children sitting in the markets, calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and we have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and we have not lamented. John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Now jump to verse 25. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Ye shall find rest in your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 
Our hymn of preparation while you're still standing is in our Songs of Zion, number four, Glory to uh -huh. His Name. And the next voice you will hear will be that of our Reverend Tracy Glover bringing the morning message. And I pray that your ears are ready to hear and your hearts ready to receive. Oh, 
And I'm going to ask you to remain standing, and I'm going to ask the choir you to stand back up, and let's just sing the chorus, if we don't mind, Miss Trudell. I don't know about y'all, but it feel a little heavy in here this morning, a little tight. Let's, so let's sing glory to his name. And if you don't have anything to praise God for, praise him for me this morning. Amen. Let's sing it like we mean it. Let's sing it like Jesus is sitting among us and we singing to Jesus himself. Come on and give him glory. Come on and tell him thank you. You may be seated. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yep. Lord, I come before you with thanksgiving in my heart, God. I come before you this morning, God, with a praise in my belly, God, because you said let everything that has breath praise you this morning, God. Lord, you allowed us to lay down in the image of death last night, God. You had your angel watched over us all night long, God, and touch us with a finger of love this morning, God. And when we rose, we were closed in our right mind with the activity of our limbs, God, and we don't take that for granted, God. Lord, we tell you, thank you. Lord, I'm asking you, God. I'm thanking you, God, for the word from Ohio this morning, God. Lord, hide me behind your cross, God. Use me as your willing vessel, God. Speak a word to us, your people, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that deaf ears have been opened, God. Scales have been removed from eyes, God. We don't want to go just go through the motions this morning, God. Lord, we came with a sense of expectancy this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, because we know that you are God that can do anything but fail. Lord, you told us that you can do more than we can even imagine. More than we can ask for by the power that worketh in us, God. Lord, wake up dormant gifts this morning in the name of Jesus. Touch God. Breathe fresh breath on us, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We adore you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your pew Bible to the book of Habakkuk. And find it on page 1272. We're going to begin reading at the first verse of chapter 2. When you find it, I'm going to ask you that you signify by standing to your feet. 1272, book of Habakkuk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, reading at the first verse. says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me, what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tablet that he may run that readeth it. 
For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Wesley, the Holy Spirit has really been dealing with me. I'm going to share what he's given me for you. Sermon topic this morning is, are you in a position to hear from God? Are you in a position to hear from God? Many times living in this world that we're living in, we have so many concerns. We have so many things that's troubling us. We have things on our job, things in our family, things in our church, things in our community. So many things that's troubling us, things that's even going on with our children. You see, we can feel like Habakkuk felt this morning because when we look around this world, we don't see nothing but turmoil. When we turn on the news, we hear wars and rumors of war. Every time we turn on the news, somebody's died or somebody's being killed. See, Habakkuk had concerns, so we feel like Habakkuk sometimes. Habakkuk was a prophet, and he was saddened by all of the turmoil and the injustice and the violence that was occurring around him. Habakkuk was puzzled, Lord, how long are you going to let this go on? If you go back and read Habakkuk chapter 1, you hear him, his complaints to God. He didn't just complain one time, but you can read about a second complaint where Habakkuk cried out to God how long anybody in here cried out this morning God all of this how long see we have to remember that we have hope we have to remember as children of God we can't give up we have to be still and know that God is still in control no matter what it looks like church no matter what it feels like we can't lose a victory that Jesus already won on the cross chapter 1 Habakkuk says how long oh Lord must I cry for help but you do not listen violence is everywhere I cry but you do not come to save us must I forever see these evil deeds and we know that evil is prevalent in this world why must I watch all this misery wherever I look I see destruction and violence I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight He said the law has become paralyzed and there's no justice in the courts. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. Everything that God says is wrong, man is now saying it's right. Everything that the Bible says, man is now flipping it upside down and saying it's okay. See, we can go to God with our prayers and concerns just like Habakkuk, we can cry out to God. We can go in our secret closets because the Bible tells us we can cast our cares on him because he cares for us. Tracy just read it this morning. All those who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. He tells us to come to God with thanksgiving and make our requests known to him. And he promises church that his peace transcends all understanding with God our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus so we can't get in the tizzy see we praying and we asking God and God heard us the first time just like he told Daniel but are we in a position to hear from God have we gotten so busy with our jobs with our life that we don't spend time with him like I like we used to the Holy Spirit woke me up early one morning when the enemy was trying to plant doubt and worry and he said hide yourself in my word hide yourself In my word, no matter what's going on around you, you get in and you hide yourself in my word because I'm going to be your shelter. I'm going to be your protector. But you got to get in that word and hide yourself in that word. 
see, he told us in John 14, 34, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the son can bring glory to the father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. See, but church, we got to go to him with a heart of expectancy. Some of us, we come to the altar Sunday after Sunday. We go in our secret closets. We ask God, but we don't believe that he can do it. See, that's what the enemy does. The enemy plants seeds of doubt. We got to know that. We know that. We know that Jesus is going to do just what he said he was going to do, church. How many of you know that it's so easy to come become distracted in the storm? How many of you know that in my heart I trust God, but I'm looking at everything going on around me and now I'm distracted. I'm focusing on the problem instead of the promise. I've got to focus on what God has already told me. And as the Holy Spirit was ministering to me, he said, let you know, we live in South Carolina. He said, because somebody need a visual. During hurricane season, a hurricane watch may come up. A watch means that conditions are favorable for the storm. That don't mean a storm has been sighted. But when they see this tornado on the ground, that watch be turns into a warning. The Holy Spirit want me to let somebody know you distracted in the watch. There's even not a storm yet, but you worrying about a storm that's going to come. He told me to tell somebody, I got you this morning. You just stand still and know that I'm God. Yes, yes. Amen. He said, also tell them, many teachers is in this. Let me help you understand. There's a lot of teachers, retired teachers. And I can remember, we would have to do these drills. We would do the fire drills. And see, when I was a little girl, when they did the tornado drills, we had to go in the hall, put our hand against the wall, over our head to protect us and when we did the earthquake drills we would have to get under the desk and scoot down for our protection somebody needs to know that God is your protection but see when we did all of that our teachers was getting us in a position to be safe are you in a position to hear from God this morning when the storms of life are raging the storms in this world is raging church sometimes we have to rise above our situation anybody able to rise above your situation this morning in other words we have to get into a position to hear from God amen somebody see I don't know about you but it's been so noisy in my life that's why God had to tell me hide yourself in my word don't worry about what's going on on your job hide yourself in my word I am going to take care of you I am already protecting you what can man do to you See, we have to remember Isaiah 40 and 31. It said, but those who trust in the Lord. King James says, who wait. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. Hallelujah. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The Holy Spirit has told us this before. He didn't pick the eagle by mistake, church. Because when the eagle know that that storm is coming, that eagle gets up on a high cliff and he waits on that storm. But he doesn't fly into the storm. What he does is to spread his wings church somebody need to spread your wings this morning and what that wind does from the storm is it lift that eagle up and that eagle don't even have to flap right. the wind that eagle hallelujah see we've got to learn how to use the storm we've got to learn how to rise above the storm just like the eagle gets in position we have to get into position. Sometimes God want to tell us something, but we out of place. We ain't in the right position. Too many times we fight. We don't have to fight because the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. All we got to do is take our position and watch the Lord fight for us. 
something about position. Position is the act of placing or arranging. And there's three things that God wanted me to point out from verse 2. In my study Bible, it says, I will climb up my watchtower. See, Habakkuk is getting in position. He's positioning himself. And what I want you to understand this morning is he didn't climb a tree. Amen? Where he went was significant. Where he went was to a watchtower. And a watchtower back then is a structure over the side of a city. Gates in the east in which a watchman, he stood. And he was stationed to observe what was going on in the distance, especially in the time of trouble. So he climbed up above everything so he could see for miles around him. And see, when he climbed up, he didn't take his whole family with him. He meant somebody. <laughs> he didn't take his best friend with him, somebody. He went and he climbed up by himself. We don't have a watchtower, but sometimes we got to go in our secret closet. We got to go in our secret closet and cry out to God. Yeah. My study told me that this watchtower provided a high, safe place. From which a sentimental or God may observe. So he was in the best position. So when he climbed up, after he climbed up, it says he watched. Amen. Somebody, he climbed up. He climbed up. Once he climbed up, hallelujah, he waited. Amen, somebody. He wasn't in a hurry. He climbed up and he stood still. Once he stood still, church, he waited. How many of you want to pray, church, and you want to answer immediately? I know we live in a microwave society, but God's timing is not our timing, church. Sometimes we got to get above our situation. Sometimes we got to hide ourselves in his words. Sometimes we got to go in our secret closet. Sometimes I can't stay five minutes. Sometimes I can't stay 30 minutes. Sometimes I've got to lay before God. I got to get in a position to hear. Because if everybody's calling you, if everybody's needing something, you can't hear from God. You can hear your family. You can hear your friends. You can hear your sorrows. But you can't hear God. You got to get in a position. How many of you have been praying for something, church? And somebody. Amen, chandeliers. You've been praying for that child. You've been praying for that spouse. You've been interceding for that job. Like he told Daniel, I heard you the first time. When you made up your mind and your heart was fixed, I heard you the first time. How many of us go into our prayer closets and we so busy talking that God can't even get a word in? got to get in a position to hear from God. Are you in position this morning? Mm. This was for me, Wesley. Hide yourself his word. Hallelujah. Hide yourself in him. People will let you down. Hallelujah, but God never will. People will turn and walk away from you, but God never will. Are you in a position? I need to tell somebody this morning, you are beautiful. You are worthy. Don't let society lie to you because God has poured a gift on the inside of you. Don't let society tell you that you're not good enough. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God can use you. He knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. He's called you for a time such as this. Wesley, are we in a position to hear from God? God's been dealing with me and the Holy Spirit is almost through. About your comfort zone. 
quote the scripture, God can open doors that no man can shut. And he can shut doors that no man can open. He's had your door open for you for so long. But you're afraid to step out in faith. Are you in a position to hear from God? Are you doing what the Holy Spirit has called you to do? I plead with you this day. Do what he says. Just do what he says. Are you in a position to hear from God? The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, and I'm not just talking about good religion this morning. I'm talking about relationship. If you have not connected to the Son, because nobody comes to the Father but by Him, do it now. Step out on faith. If you're in a backslidden state, I need to tell you, it's time to come home. God loves you. Mm. He told them in 2 Chronicles, Jehoshaphat, when a large army was coming before him, he said, go stand still. Take your position and see the glory of the Lord because what you're dealing with today, you won't see again. And as they began to praise, the army turned on each other. Amen? They destroyed the other army and then they turned on each other. God will fight your battles, church, if you just trust them. But get in a position now to hear from God. If you're in a backslidden state, come home. It doesn't matter what man says. God is waiting with outstretched arms. He says, come home, my child. The doors of Wesley is open. If God has sent you to connect to this body, give us your hand, but be sure to give God your heart. The, as the choir sings, the altar is open for prayer. You may come at this time. Um, 
told me everything's gonna be alright. Don't told me everything's gonna be alright. Don't told me everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, from your word on high, God, just telling us, God, to get in position to hear from you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for reminding us, God, that we can cast our cares on you because you care for us, God. We come before you once again, God. Lord, Psalm came for one thing, God, and Psalm came for another, God. But, Lord, you know all about us, God. You know exactly what we need even before we can ask, God. Lord, but I'm asking you, God, to give us, God, enough faith, God, to release it to you this morning, God. We've been playing tug of war for far too long, God. I'm asking you, God, to give us the strength, God, to release it to you this morning, God, so that you can work it out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for reminding us about our hope, God, that we know, God, that Jesus has gone away, God, but he's preparing a mansion for us, God, because we're coming. he's coming back one day, God, that where he is, we may be also, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for increasing spiritual vision today, God. Increase spiritual hearing today, God, so that we can hear, God, and we can see what you want us to see, God. Move by your spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift the Green Pond community up before you in the Madwood family, God. I'm asking you to cradle them in your arms in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them feel your presence more than ever now in the name of Jesus. Let them know, God, that you're comforting them those that mourn in the name of Jesus. Or let them know, God, that you are a healer, God. And you are close to the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us over, God. Circumcise our hearts in the name of Jesus. Change our minds that our, that mind that was in Christ will also be in us, God. Help us to focus on you, God. Help us to hear you, God. Help us to trust you with our whole hearts in the name of Jesus. Help us to remember that all things work together for the good of us that love the Lord and is called according to his purpose. In Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name I pray. And we all say amen, amen, amen. May return to your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We prepare to feast at his table. I'm going to ask you to turn page 12 in your United Methodist hymnal. our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another merciful God we confess that we have not loved with our whole heart yes. obedient church yes. we have not been we have not we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the meeting. Forgive us, we pray. Free us of joyful obedience. We keep Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. As, a, as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. God of power and might, heaven and earth, give glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for, for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet for your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And with now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and he was not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, how we will live forever. Amen. Let us give our humble confession. Once we've given our humble confession, we may pull back, honor with the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. You may partake. So the liner that's covering the juice, re representing the blood of Christ shed on Calvary for your sins and mine. This is the blood of Christ given for you. You may partake. forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we all say together, Amen. I ask that you keep that word close. Are you in position to hear from God? that word close, hold it in your heart. 
As we now have the ushers come forward to welcome the guests, Harris concerns, followed by the pastor's concern. Keep your word. Keep your word close. Welcome. For our guests, I'm going to go there first since I'm going to call a name. Um, we have the Mitchell family who's been away for a little bit. Um, they come back from Columbia every now and then. Speaking of, Geraldine says she's doing well and she misses us. And those are her sisters, Jackie and Mary, and her niece and her nephew and her friend, James, um, Mr. Jameson. All right. Okay. Birthdays for the week of July 9th through 15th. July 9th, Lisa Matthews Fall. July the 11th, our guest, Mr. Garrison Hampton, will come July the 11th. And then on the 13th, Billy Bagwell. Mr. Garrison is here. And welcome. Oops, we cooked too much. Please join us after church next Sunday and enjoy the smorgasbord at the educational building. Thanks, the kitchen staff. We want you to keep our members on the prayer list in your prayers and give them a call if you need to. Uh, words to encourage evangelism. If I pay attention, God will show me the way. Um, and on the fifth Sunday, the outreach ministry is in charge for that Sunday. Praise the Lord. Lord. Everybody. Praise the Lord. We have so much to be grateful for. Yes. So much to tell God, thank you for. I don't take for granted this breath that I wake up with every morning. My mother used to say, ask the man on the cooling board. So I'm just a praiser at heart. But Wesley, you know, I don't have a lot of concerns this morning. I do want to ask you, if you have not heard, um, I'm not sure whether you all get to new, the news down here that we get, but please keep the green on community in your prayers, um, along with the Magwood family as they prepare to kill six people that was murdered and burnt in a house. It is a community that is mourning. It is a community that is hurting. That's also two more children from the Carlton County School District that we are mourning. So I'm just going to ask you, let's stand together and intercede with them and for them. Um, I'm asking that as we prepare for charge conference, I would like to meet with the leadership committee on 719, it will be a Wednesday via WebEx at 6 o'clock. And that's Mr. James Johnson, Mr. Ruby, Miss Ruby Johnson, Ms. Cynthia, Dr. Cynthia Hayes, Ms. Carmelita Lawton, Mr. William McBride, Mr. Samuel Carter, if he's able, and Ms. Crystal Yawn. I will send out a text just to remind you. Just meet for a few minutes because we do have some positions that is going to need to be filled. And that way we'll have a couple of weeks that we can pray together and ask God to guide us in that appointment. Amen. Thank you so much for going on with service. Um, last Sunday, I was able to watch, and lay servant Alvin Glenn did a good job, and I thank Carmelita and everybody for going on with service, um, but it's not like being in the sanctuary. <laughs> I can tell you that. I got the word, but it's not like being in the sanctuary. Keep my family in prayer, as always. Um, because when you're stretched so thin, I told you the Holy Spirit was dealing with me. Hide yourself in my word. He let me know you're too busy. 
I need some more of your attention. I've just finished two courses, two A's, praise the Lord. I start two more courses this week. That's going to be seven this year, one last December, and I'm finishing up class number six. So please keep me in your prayers because I have to do what man says in order to keep man's license, but I know my anointing is from God. I love you, Wesley. Stay in position to hear from God. Our closing hymn this morning is close to thee, number 407 in your United Methodist hymnal. If you're able, again, I want to ask you to please stand and pray that you all have a blessed and wonderful week. All life to me, all life to me, all life to me, all life to me, all to me, Let us look to the Lord and be dismissed. God, we thank you, God. We thank you for your word that we can hide in our heart. We thank you for your word that we can hide in God. We thank you, God, for being a shelter in the time of trouble, a shelter in the time of distress, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for loving us even when we are disobedient, God. Thank you for forgiving us, God. Thank you for giving us a word to go out and share this week, God, to remind somebody to get in position to hear from God. Now, may the love of God, the sweet, sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And we all sing together.